Be the best thief. Look into your future to shape your destiny and avoid danger. This is a thief's fortune. What is it about? In this video, we're going to show you what to expect from a thief's fortune. And if you watch till the end, we hope that you can know whether or not this game is for you. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Nepal University, bringing you a variety of quality board game videos. On this channel, we do a lot of how to play, play through, review, flow, and I'll review just like this one. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and do hit the bell to be notified of when we post new videos. Now, let's get to the table. Released in 2019 via Kickstarter, A Thief's Fortune is a card drafting game designed by Konstantinos Kokinis and Sotirios Tsentsilis and published by Artipia Games. The game plays two to four players competitively with a solo mode. It plays in 45 minutes and is of light complexity. In A Thief's Fortune, players play as Arabian thieves who have a glimpse into their own future. Over the course of five rounds of the game, players will influence their own futures through a card draft and then use the actions on those cards to generate victory points. Each round is split into four phases, planning, looting, actions and bribes. In the planning phase, players draft new location, character and event cards, with each player finishing with a total of four new cards and discarding a fifth for the resources shown at the bottom. Unusual to most drafting games, players, after choosing their first card, hand two off to an opponent keeping others, rather than the whole hand, and this allows players to take multiple cards from the same drawn hand. All cards drafted in this phase are placed to the right of a player's area. This represents the player's future, and the resources shown in the top left are then placed onto the cards. In the looting phase, Players take a total of 5, 6 or 7 resources off their future cards depending on which round the game is in. Any cards with no resources left on them are moved immediately into the player's present section. Any danger resources that the player takes go onto this track. In the actions phase, players will spend their resources and utilise the cards in their present section in order to gain bonuses and score points. Characters have powers which can be activated once per turn, often worth extra resources or points. Events have a once-off use, which are again worth resources or points, and they are, after use, discarded into this pile representing the player's past. Locations have a bonus effect which triggers off another card's action. Players can also spend hourglasses in this phase to take another resource off a card from the future, possibly moving that card into the present. Each round finishes with a bribe phase, in which players must pay a resource for each danger token that he or she has gained. Danger tokens come on some of the game's more powerful cards, and so players who avoid taking them will avoid paying bribes but may struggle with a set of weaker actions among their cards. Some cards come with actions which allow danger to be removed. A player's final points come from two sources. From the points gained during the game for actions and effects on cards, and from any points printed on the bottom right corner of cards which have been moved into the player's past pile. As such, a key element of the game is in moving character and location cards from the future to the present and then to the past. These cards are automatically pushed from the present into the past when a fifth card is added to either row, but otherwise can only be discarded from the specific action of another card. Cards left in the present at the end of the game do not score their points, but players can't activate a card once it's been moved to the past meaning players need to optimise these two areas and the flow of cards into the past through the game. Although all cards are text-based in A Thief's Fortune, the actions and the effects on the cards are relatively straightforward, and so the learning curve is not too steep, and the best combinations won't take multiple plays to master. After five rounds, 
any points on past cards are added to points gained during the game and the player with the highest score wins. The game can be played using the common futures area in which one card of each type is made available for all players to take the resources or cards as part of a shared future. As well as the solo mode in which the draft is adapted to suit solo play and the win-loss condition is based on an objective card drawn at the start of the game. And that's what to expect from a gift fortune. We hope that you enjoyed the video and we hope that it helps you. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by clicking the like button and you can write your questions or feedback in the comments sections below. You can also join our Facebook group, Maple University Community, to share your love of board games. And finally, if you'd like to be among the first notified on what's new from Meeple University, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can click on the Meeple up in the corner to do so, and do hit the bell for notifications. Until next time!